You, I won't put up with an elderly woman depending on me any longer. Just gather your belongings and go. We've been married for a long time, so you should appreciate that. In simpler terms, you're seeking a divorce. Then he departed with a shrill voice instructing me not to request his return, suggesting I should understand. Am I being clear? He insisted that I lack the intelligence to comprehend. Is he planning to divorce me and marry my sister? They exchanged surprised glances. I'm Camilla, living with my husband Owen. I'm in my late 55S and he's four years younger. I have a younger sister and both she and my husband went to college together. Thanks to my sister, I got to know my husband and together we have three children. Now, our kids are grown up, leading their own lives with families of their own. As I reach this stage in life, I find myself pondering the past quite often. A lot has unfolded in my journey so far. Although I cherish my three children, I am not content with my husband. He consistently ridicules my level of education, highlighting that I only completed high school due to my current unemployment. This becomes a recurring point of contention with my husband. To be fair, he's accurate. I did indeed finish my education with a high school diploma. In the beginning, I had a desire to go to high school because I genuinely enjoyed learning. Sadly, our financial circumstances were tough during that period. In those times, the internet wasn't as widespread, and the world seemed much smaller. As a result, I heeded my parents' counsel, completed high school, and found employment. Meanwhile, my sister, who is six years younger than me, successfully graduated from college. This is because I put in a lot of effort to support her through college. Living with limited resources was challenging, and I didn't want her to go through the same difficulties, so I decided to work even harder. Fortunately, she excelled academically and got into a prestigious university, where my husband was also a classmate. He takes great pride in this fact and often brings up his education during our arguments. Interestingly, when we first met, he never showed this side. We were at the peak of happiness when we got married and had our first daughter. However, as time went on, my joy started to fade. During that period, it was common for people to leave their jobs after getting married. I had intended to quit my job to give more attention to raising our child, but my husband had a different perspective. He wanted me to work full-time while also managing household responsibilities and looking after our child. Interestingly, he had left his job when our first son was born thinking he would support me becoming a full-time homemaker, focusing on household duties. I felt let down when he didn't do anything. Responsibilities for household chores and taking care of the children continued to rest solely on my shoulders. Even if he wouldn't lend a hand with anything, I hoped he could at least provide financial support for the family. I questioned my capability to raise two kids on my own and was anxious about our finances. Four months after he left his job, I proposed that he should start working again. Instead of being understanding, he snapped back, saying, Who do you think you're talking to? You're the only one right in front of me. It's been half a year. Are you planning to remain unemployed? You believe you can dictate what I should do. Oh, not this again. Unlike you who finished junior high school, I have higher aspirations. Good for you. So I suppose you'll achieve your ultimate goal soon. If I want a job, I find one, and you don't get to decide my job. I have the ability to choose. I shot back, Oh, really? then go ahead and pick one. He responded, I can't. There's no job that I want to do. It appeared that despite graduating from a prestigious university, he, while he might shine in academics, his ability to earn a living is lacking. Depending solely on his esteemed university degree without taking concrete steps is merely a surface-level achievement. It's high time he adds something substantial to the family's well-being. What kind of nonsense is this? It's unreasonable for me to manage everything, right? You're the person who brought these kids into the world? Express some appreciation. I've stuck with this man for a long time because of the challenges we face together. Nowadays, people easily judge and criticize those who get divorced, especially mothers and their kids who often become targets of unnecessary gossip. I don't want that for my family. Now that our children are adults, I think it's okay to part ways. As I near retirement, the thought of divorcing him seems like a positive step. And thinking about it brings a sense of hope for my future. With some extra time on my hands now that the kids are grown, I've been working hard to get ready for my high school equivalency exam. I managed to pass the test, but I haven't told my husband about it because I'm afraid he'll make fun of me. Just the other day, I received a letter of acceptance, and my sister called to check in, asking, How's everything going? I'm currently on my way. Are you at home now? What's going on? Yes, I'm at home. 
All right, I'm at the station. Please unlock the door in five minutes. Oh, she ended the call. Ten minutes later, my sister actually arrived. What's the matter? How's your husband? We got divorced. What? When did this happen? Oh, well, it was about four months ago. I had no idea about that. You never told me, so... By the way, is there an extra room in the house? No, there isn't. Yes, there is. The kids are all grown up now. Yes, we still have space for them if they decide to visit. I've kept their rooms untouched. So the guest room is currently unoccupied. Well, that's correct. I'll make use of that room then. All right. I'll officially move in starting today. Hold on for a moment. Is it really that pressing? No, it's not urgent. I've already obtained approval from the teams. Indeed, I suggested she come over if she's facing any issues. My husband just returned from the convenience store. Why are decisions being made without my input? It's a bit unusual, Anju. Your sister is going through a tough time, and you're expected to support her. This is why people often say that those who have just graduated from middle school can be a bit unaware. You're right, and she doesn't seem to offer help to others. Ava took his side against me, and it's disheartening. Despite my continuous efforts for her, she's still family, but I can't help feeling resentful about it. Despite all this, my position on things hasn't changed. I moved in with Ava, and I'm the sole breadwinner in this family. Ava and Owen appear to be idle every day. When you're staying at someone's house, it's expected to lend a hand. Why isn't Owen doing anything or at least covering his living expenses? Oh, Evelyn, you must have faced challenges after finishing middle school. It's quite surprising how concerned you are about money. I was genuinely surprised, and after a while, Ava and Owen started dating. What bothered me the most was how they treated each other. I don't think they realize it, but it seems like they're in a romantic relationship. I see. I need to find out what's really going on here. Considering their lack of common sense, it wouldn't be shocking if it turned out to be an affair. I chose to hire an agency to look into them. And a week later, the findings confirmed my suspicions. They were indeed having an affair. When I disclosed this discovery to my children, they agreed with me that it was time to pursue a divorce. Now, I have no lingering regrets. I decided to bide my time for the right moment to start the divorce proceedings. In their absence, I set out on the path to pursue my law degree. This journey began when I was working as a janitor in a lawyer's office. During my time there, a fellow employee shared an uplifting story with me about passing the bar exam at the age of 68. I was genuinely impressed that someone in their 40s could tackle and overcome such a challenge. This story struck a chord with me, and I decided to embrace a similar challenge. The day I retired came, and upon arriving home, I noticed an unusual smile on the faces of Team and Ava. They called me over for a conversation. I'd like to have a chat with you, Team said. What's going on? I inquired. You retired today, correct? That means you're jobless. How do you plan to support yourself? You don't have a job and only completed middle school. Honestly, I'm fed up. I won't tolerate an elderly woman leeching off me. Just collect your things and go. I've been your spouse for a significant time, so show some gratitude. In simpler terms, you're seeking a divorce, he proclaimed, departing with an elevated tone. Don't bother asking why. You understand what I mean. Should I spell it out for you? You just don't have the smarts to understand. It's clear as day. Are you plotting to divorce me and tie the knot with Ava? They exchanged looks of astonishment and erupted into laughter once more. Well, you caught on. Let's wrap this up swiftly. I don't require you anymore. If you absolutely refuse to go, I might entertain the idea if you lower yourself and kneel down. That won't be needed. I had harbored the wish to conclude my marriage upon retirement, and this circumstance conveniently provided the opportunity. Thus, I declared, I retrieved the divorce papers from my bag. The two of them froze, mouths agape. Get it done swiftly, I'm out of here. Team inquired, Why are you the one preparing the divorce papers? Because I was considering a divorce, I figured this would be the appropriate moment if it was going to happen. I changed my clothes for the last time. Hurry up, let's go. Isn't it a relief that Evelyn is leaving after all? The team quickly signed the divorce papers, and I readily confirmed my agreement. That's it. I affirmed his entry without any hesitation. I guess he wasn't happy with my attitude. He's still upset. Well, you only finished middle school. Your life won't be long. You're aware of that. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. Please, both of you. My words signaled to the kids that it was time to come into the living room. Take this and make sure he doesn't rip it apart. Sure, I understand. You all seem quite unhappy. You're being called the worst dad. 
Graduating from a top-notch university is a big achievement for you, but it doesn't seem to add much to your life. You seem satisfied with the accolade, even though you've been working your entire life. That's really foolish, don't you think? I remarked. What? The truth is, my daughter beat me to the punch. You're truly an unintelligent, unemployed old fool. Okay, kids, that's painfully true. You guys are so brutally honest. I possessed solid proof of their affair, a clear means to unveil their wrongdoing. With that, I left the house alongside my children once they realized their pockets were empty. They ought to have compensated me with $10 million for the shock they inflicted by being jobless. I suspected they borrowed money from a dubious lender catering to those without jobs and questionable credit. Following this, I initiated divorce proceedings and gained my freedom. Now I can finally concentrate on my studies. I took up a part-time job as a cleaner and devoted myself to diligent study. As a result, I secured admission to the law school of my choice. After an intense four years of studying, I successfully finished graduate school and passed the bar exam, turning my dream of becoming a lawyer into reality. To celebrate this milestone, my children, along with their families, threw a little party for me. It was a joyous occasion, symbolizing the culmination of my journey from a challenging divorce to the fulfillment of my career aspirations. Once upon a time, my life was exceptionally wonderful. However, you know the saying about those who are looking for me. True to form, one day, my ex-husband showed up at my new house, crying for help. He expressed his concerns about my sister, Ava, who was currently unemployed, and the dire financial situation they were facing. After four years of intense study, for years, I successfully completed graduate school and managed to pass the bar exam. I achieved my dream of becoming a lawyer. To celebrate my accomplishment, my children, along with their families, threw me a little party. It was a joyous occasion marking the culmination of my journey from a challenging divorce to the realization of my career dreams. Once upon a time, my life was incredibly wonderful. However, you know how the saying goes about those two who were searching for me. And sure enough, one day, my ex-husband showed up at my new house, crying for help. He lamented about my sister Ava, who wasn't working at all, and the dire financial situation they were facing. I decided to seek solace with my kids, but they wouldn't see me. The response was, Of course not, you idiot. What do you mean, I say you will be something great? All you had was a college name. You've got nothing to live for. Don't be foolish, you're just trying to get on your good side. You're just a middle school crazy eight, not even close to me. However, I revealed that I had recently passed the bar exam. But I realized that if I let my education slide now, I would fall to the same level as my ex-husband. Irony struck when he, whom I had always made fun of, came asking for money. I couldn't help but find it hilarious. Why do you live in such a nice place? He questioned. It's because of my job. Yes, I work. I used to be a janitor at a law firm. His confusion was palpable. What do you mean, a janitor? Yeah, I'm a private cleaner now. I clean my own desk. His bewilderment grew. Your desk? What are you talking about? I decided to let him in, leaving the door chain on as a precaution. I handed him my lawyer badge and he simply froze. You know, if you don't give up, you can make your life as long as you want. But if you continue to follow me around like this, we'll have to settle things in court. I spoke firmly, slamming the door loud enough to make a statement. From that point forward, my ex-husband never approached me again. Ava tried once, but after I conveyed the same message, she never appeared again, just like him. The two of them, lacking in education and effort, seemed destined to continue their downward spiral. It appeared they were heading down a path of self-destruction, fueled by their lack of determination. In life, anything is possible if you refuse to give up. I've always been someone who believes in hard work, and I've earned the respect of those around me. I'm grateful that my children are fully supportive of me, and I genuinely hope Chen leads a fulfilling life.